to the Metal Bob Live Podcast. I am your host, Metal Bob. Today's show is brought to you by Legend Picks, artist Jeremiah Kallick, and also the Texas Vinyl Coalition. You can find links to our sponsors and more on the Metal Bob Live website. There you can also find links to the latest Metal Bob gear, including shirts, hoodies, and more. On today's show, I had the honor of speaking with guitarist Brian Forsyth of Kicks and Rhino Bucket. We discuss the early days of kicks and also touch on Brian's passion for cooking. So sit back, have a listen, and enjoy the show. Thank you. Hello, Brian. Hello. Hey, man. How you doing, brother? Good. I appreciate your time today. Yeah, my pleasure. So I gotta ask my first question for you, brother. I, I need to know how you got the nickname Damage. Uh, I get that question a lot, but it, uh, it actually came about while we were recording the uh, Midnight Dynamite record. Um, you know, back then we recorded that up in New York City. So so every night we'd get done playing, we'd go out, you know, on the town or you know to to some bar somewhere, and and. Uh, so every morning I'd show up the next day at the studio with a hangover. <laughs> and and I remember this one particular day, I was just feeling horrible. And in the control room, there was this couch in front of a control board. And I was just laying on this couch and moaning. And, uh, and Bo Hill was, you know, back there mixing. And in between takes, he could hear me down there just like, oh. <laughs> and uh, and his nickname for me was Brain, which is Brian with the A and the I reverse. So he used to call me Brain to begin with. And then uh, that day, at one point, he, he stops the, the tape and he walks around to the front of the console where I'm laying. And he looks at me and he goes, you know what? We should call you Brain Damage. <laughs> and then it just stuck. So I became, well, Brian Damage, but... I like it. I like it, man. I, I you know, I, I just wanted to know, cause I, I see that all over everywhere, everywhere your name is, it's got that damage right in the middle. And I'm like, I got to find out what that's all about. <laughs> I know. Cause usually people meet me and I'm just kind of easy going and they're going, how'd you get that nickname? It doesn't fit. <laughs> Love it. But yeah. So, Hey, I got, I got to ask you. So back before kicks was kicks, you guys were called the shoes. Is that correct? Yeah. So can you give me a little insight on how, you know, shoes became kicks? Uh, well, um, you know, we, we initially got together way back in oh, December 1977. And it was before we had Steve or, or Jimmy in the band. And uh, we were, we put together, you know, like a, a, a list, of, a set list of songs, most, mostly cover songs, but, but a bunch of originals. And we had to um, book some gigs, and we so we had to come up with a name. And I remember the the drummer at the time, this guy named Donnie Spence. You know, we're all sort of sitting. At, it was only four of us. That, well, no, did we have a singer? Actually, it was before we even had a singer. We were sitting around. It was just the four of us, and and it was like, well, we got to come up with a name. And everybody's throwing out different things. And I remember uh, our drummer just kind of looked down at his feet, and he goes. How about the shoes? <laughs> and and then, you know, then I thought, yeah, that's kind of cool. We could spell it S-H-O-O-Z-E. So that just, that became it. And and then uh, when it came time to get a record deal, there was another band in the Midwest called Shoes, um, spelled like Shoes, but they had songs on the radio. So we So the record company said, well, you can't use that name. It's too, you know it'll be too confusing and I don't think we could use it anyway. So we had to come up with another name and that we temporarily came up with the generators until we got to the, until we recorded the record. And when, when they went to do the artwork for the album cover, they, they ran that name and found out that we couldn't use that name either. So at the last minute, they, it was like they had to have the, the artwork in by the end of the day or something. And, or else it would have messed up the release date of the record. So they, they come to us and they go, you got to, you got to come up with another name. <laughs> and, uh, just 
off the top of his head, Donnie goes, how about kicks? And spell it K-I-X. So it was like a spur of the moment thing. And um, I remember we all kind of looked at each other and kind of, uh, I don't know. And it was like, well, we, we, nobody else has any better ideas. So, <laughs> so it was almost like, it was like, yeah, okay, I guess. That's, so that's awesome. That's how kicks. That's how kicks came to be. Yeah, you know, one of my, I also you said Midwest, but I, you're you're from Illinois originally, aren't you? Yeah, that's where I was born. I I mean, we moved from there when I was two years old, so I don't even remember it. But yeah, Champaign. Yeah, I thought that was cool, man, because I'm from Illinois originally, so I, I seen that and I thought that was pretty awesome. Yeah, my my father was uh, going to college down there. Okay. At the time, yeah, uh, my younger brother and I were both born there, and then from there we moved to Arlington, Virginia. So then we went to the East Coast. Awesome. So hey, uh, real quick, man. So one of my one of the big songs that I always really loved from Kicks was "Cold Shower." Man, I just really love that guitar riff. Man, how did you get that? How did you get that tone out of that guitar riff, man? Uh, are you speaking about the bass line? No, I'm talking cold or, shower, the guitar riff, the the Well, uh Donnie wrote that uh with um John Palumbo. He co wrote that with John Palumbo and uh so they kinda came up with it the um the John Palumbo came up with that bass line. And then, uh, you know, Donnie came up with most of the the the, um, the initial guitar parts for stuff, as far as like rhythm guitars. And then he would show them to Ronnie and I, and then we'd sort of put our own spin on it and, and you know make it into a, a real guitar part. But uh, yeah, and then that one, uh, I played a Stratocaster, which I usually only play here and there on a couple songs. I'm not really a Strat guy. So a lot of times when I pick up a different guitar that I'm not, that I don't normally use all the time, it it, it causes me to play differently. And a Strat has its, its you know its signature sound, so that helped with the, the tone of the thing too. But here's the thing, uh, an interesting fact: when we were doing the Night Dynamite and we were recording that song, I went out into the studio with my Strat, and it was this old '63 that that baby blue looking strat that i i have one now it's similar but it's not the same one that i had back then but you know it was, it was an old vintage strat and i go out there and and it's buzzing and making all this noise because that's the way strats are right. and i remember Bo hill was complaining about the buzz and he goes don't you have a, a better guitar <laughs> and i'm like no i said i want to use this one i mean this is the sound and and he was just he didn't want me to use it and the way that I won the argument was I said, go back and listen to any Hendrix record. You can hear the buzz on in there. Yeah. Like, and any, I mean, it's, it's obvious. And it's like, that, that just adds to the whole thing. But it's so he finally let me use it, but, but yeah, it's funny. <laughs> well, yeah, I've always dug your sound, man. You've always had that cool guitar tone that I don't know what it was about kicks band, but your guitar tone always stood out in the eighties, man. It was just like, I always knew when it was you playing, man, because you could just hear that dirty, that dirty guitar, and I always loved that about you. Well, one of the one of the secrets really is, um, you know, I don't use effects, or or very rarely, you know, there's one or two here and there that I'll use, but uh, it's mostly just straight into the amp with the amp cranked, and and I'm using, you know, mostly just. Uh, vintage guitars, you know, nothing fancy. <laughs> so it's uh, that, it's just raw, stripped down kind of. That that's where I get my tone. No, it's amazing. Yeah, I'll tell you a little story, man. So I was at I was at a stoplight one time, and I was actually listening to "Blow My Fuse," man. And I almost got in a car accident that day because that for some reason that album always got me hyped up. So I almost got in several car accidents while listening to that album because I would not pay attention to what the hell was going on around me. <laughs> Right. <laughs> just, that that album was just such an ass kicker, man. Just yeah, there's there's certain there's certain uh, bands that'll do that to me. If I'm listening to it in my car, 
I'll look down I'm, at my speedometer and I'll be going like 80 miles an hour. And I'm like, oh, man, I better back off. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what that album did to me, man. I just love it. But I don't know. I just always love that song, Cold Shower, man. And I just love that tone that you had on that recording. And just the guitar rip was just so cool, man. And I just always, always appreciated that about you. Ah, well, that's a compliment. But hey, so you know, we're, we'll get back to the tunes. But I want to know a little bit about your cooking, man. You, you know, I, I follow you on Facebook and YouTube and all this stuff, man. And I mean, you're quite the cook. <laughs> well, I, I love to eat. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, could... it's funny. I've I've always I've sort of you know all my life. Well, I grew up with with um, two brothers and a sister, and you know, and, and back when we were kids. You know, you'd come in from being outside all day running around and you'd want your mother to make you lunch or something. And, and a lot of times she'd be busy and she'd go, oh, I'll make your own. <laughs> and, uh, and my, you know, it's usually, uh, my younger brother and I, we, cause we're, we're, uh, close in age. So it would be us together. And, and, uh, so we'd have to go into the kitchen and try to fend for ourselves. And, and, uh, I just remember my, my brother would be like, mad because my mother wouldn't wouldn't come and, and make lunch for us <laughs> so he'd just slap a dry piece of lunch meat on on two pieces of bread and sit there and with this powder on his face <laughs> eating it and and uh and i remember saying well I'm, i don't want to do that i want to make mine good you know and i'd just take the time and i'd make this like the best sandwich ever even better than my mother could make so that's kind of where it started and and i've always you know, I've always been interested in it, but, you know, I kind of, I kind of, um, compare cooking to like painting or, or even music, you know, like when you're, when someone is really good at like painting, they're, they're good with colors and mixing and, and the same thing with food, with, you know, I, I just have this ability to sort of, like, I don't follow recipes. I just sort of make it up as I go and, and, I can sort of just imagine what I need for this and that. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure if a, if a real cook or a chef watched me cook, they'd be horrified. <laughs> well, I don't, cause I don't follow it. I don't follow any rules. Well, I don't know about that, man. I just, just this past week, just watching all your posts, I've gained like 12 pounds. So <laughs> yeah, you, you're, you're doing, just... you're doing something right. <laughs> Well, I also take a good photo of it too. That's 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 important. You do, man. It's pretty awesome. And I and I seen you got you got something coming out called Keto Rocks Carnivore or Carnivore Country. What's that all about? Uh, well, this is this friend of mine uh, has a, had a podcast, and he he kept reaching out to me saying, "Hey, uh, you know, I'm I'm getting this podcast started, and I want to know if you want to do it with me." And um, and at first I was hesitant, you know, I was like, well, you know, I could be a guest, but I don't know if I want to do a weekly podcast. And, um, and then we did it and it was kind of fun. I mean, we just sort of wing it and, and, and sometimes we'll have, you know, guests on there, mostly people sharing their success stories, um, you know, after going keto, but, uh, yeah, so that's all that it really is. And, and he sort of, uh, initiated it you know if it was up to me i, I probably never would have gotten it started because <laughs> you know i think about a lot of stuff but i i'm not motivated a lot of times so this guy is sort of the motivation behind it all right well that's cool man but yeah dude i, I don't know i just i follow you a lot on facebook and youtube and i know you got your own youtube channel and you, you post videos once in a while, and I just I find them very interesting, man. And the end product always looks pretty damn good to me. <laughs> yeah, and that came about, well, because of the, the pandemic and all that stuff. You know, I'm stuck at home here. I can't go do shows anymore, well, until they start up again. And um, so, you know, I would post food pictures, and then people started saying, oh, you should do a Facebook Live. And I'm like, uh you know, I'm thinking, and this is, you know, this is, and this is me like trying to, that, I, I get ideas sometimes or, or somebody will give me an idea and I think, how would I ever, ever do that? And I was thinking, Facebook Live, how would I cook and do a live? Like, there's just no way because, you know, I don't know how I would do both. And then 
I had so many people say that to me that I finally started thinking there must be a way to do this because I know other people do it. And so I didn't actually do the live. I figured, well, if I just, you know, record it, I can at least edit it together into one thing. So, um, I tried it just for fun and, and it worked. So I just kept doing them, but now it's sort of slowed down a little because I've, you know, if somebody really looks at what I cook, I, I do a lot of the same stuff. I, there's not a whole lot of variety. I just sort of switch off the the way that I like. Um, it's always like some kind of meat, and then the eggs. I'll make them like either scrambled or poached or or sunny side up. Like, but it'll be the same meal as last week with the diff, with the eggs made differently, so it looks different. <laughs> but you know, especially now that I'm, I've gone like complete carnivore. I don't, I don't use vegetables, fruit or, fruits or vegetables, or grains or any of that junk. So it's just animal-based food. So there's not a whole lot of variety left. Right. I, so, you know, it, unless I come up with like something that I haven't done before, like yesterday, I, I made that gigantic steak, and I was thinking oh, I should. I should film this, but I had already started the night before by, no, it wasn't the night before, but, oh, I had some kind of Zoom meeting yesterday, and I had to, I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I sort of had to break up the, I couldn't cook the thing all at once, and, and then, uh, and then I thought, wow, it's a steak, I've already done steaks, and I forget where I was. Now, now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So it sort of slowed down. I, I, I um. And another thing about these uh, food, these food videos, you know, I got this smoker. You know, I've been doing a lot of smoking of of meats and stuff, which is an all day affair. And uh, so it means I got to get up early to get some meat on there. And then I have this, my, this workout routine I do in the mornings. So if I'm going to film it, I have to look like, you know, I can't be in my workout clothes or anything. So I got to get up, I got to get dressed, do the first part where I'm putting the meat on and then go change back, you know, to my workout stuff, go try to do a workout. Like it's just like, you know, when there's a camera involved, I have to, it's not like I can just sort of, turn it on at any time. I got to look presentable. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, man, everything that you've been putting on there looks pretty damn good, man. So, you know, well, it tastes good. <laughs> yeah. I, it, that, that, I, I just watched that prime rib video you did today. I actually watched that where you cook that giant prime rib, man. Oh that, yeah. That thing looked awesome when you cut it open. Oh, I love prime rib. Yeah. And that thing lasted Seven or eight days, man. That was a big chunk of meat. Yeah, I was, I was looking, <laughs> that, I was looking on Google Maps while you were cooking that thing. I'm thinking, man, I can get down there in about six hours, man. Maybe he'll save me a piece of that because I got a, I got <laughs> that thing looks. Pretty. Yeah, between that one and then uh, a couple weeks earlier, I did that giant 17 pound brisket. Yeah. Oh, man, my my text messages are blowing up for some reason. I, I hope that's not coming through. Oh, you're good, man. You're good. Okay. But uh, <laughs> no, man. I just, I just wanted to give you props on that, man, because you, you look like you know what you're doing in the kitchen, brother. Well, I, I try. <laughs> hey, you enjoy it. That's all that matters, right? Yeah, yeah, I definitely do. So, all right, we'll get back to some tunes here, man. So, what? Do you are you still doing the Rhino Bucket thing, or are you just doing the Kicks thing now? Yeah, it's just. Down to the kicks thing. Uh, after we, after Rhino Bucket put out that last record, um, it was 2017. Um, you know, we did uh, we did uh, a small European tour, and then we did the Monsters of Rock cruise, and then uh, George, the singer, decided to, to call it quits because uh, I don't know. Rhino Bucket is such a cool band, and I had had so much fun with it but it was so hard to to um to get any gigs especially in the u.s 
um, we there were so many times when we would try to book a run a gig, and then we'd look at the numbers and it was like, oh man, you know, when we come, we're going to owe seven hundred and fifty dollars by the time we're done, and you know, we're not going to make anything. So it was like we'd have to cancel it, and the only way we could make money was to go to Europe and tour for like uh, you know a minimum of like four weeks, four to eight weeks. And, um, and then, you know, with me playing with kicks, that, that window of opportunity to go to Europe was kept getting smaller and smaller. Um, so anyway, you know, George sort of got disillusioned because, you know, there was a lot of factors. I, I couldn't put my full time into it. And then the band really was just scraping by financially. So we called it quits, but I've been talking to George on and off since and, I know that he's going to, well, he's even hinted about doing another record. He, he keeps saying, hey, if you, you know, keep thinking of song ideas. <laughs> so he's starting to get antsy, I think, again. Right. Well, so that, a, might, that, might, that might come around again. That'd be great, man. I've always loved those Rhino Bucket records, man. That You know, that band's been a great band for years. You know, the, Yeah, and it, it was a fun, kind of a fun outlet for me because it was, it was different, just different enough from kicks but but i could still use my own thing and it worked with that 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 format so is uh is kicks working on any new material at this point uh we have discussed doing another record and everybody's sort of been working on ideas here and there but we have not put anything together and there's no like uh plan um I mean, this would have been a great opportunity with the shutdown and all that to, to do something. But, um, you know, I live in Nashville and they all live in up around, you know, the Maryland area. So that didn't happen. And, um, but at some point it will, you know, since the last record, it, it seems like, uh, you know, we put that one out and then, then we put that, uh, documentary thing out. And then Blow My Fuse 30 came out. So there's all these little things along the way that, that sort of uh, sort of uh, put off the, the recording of, of anything new. But eventually it's going to happen. And another thing happened, uh, um, another thing that happened was uh, Loud and Proud Records sort of went under too. What was that? Um, uh, can't remember the name of it. That uh, the uh, ah, I can't even think of what I'm thinking. Well, I know, but, <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, loud and proud went under. There, there was this um ah, what was that site that was selling the records? And they went bankrupt or something. Like all these people that put out records on that, whatever that was. Why can't I think of what the um, name was? I think it was something Bird. Was it had Bird in the title? Am, am I am I am I hitting the right in the ballpark there? No, nah, that doesn't ring a bell. But I I know uh, you guys you guys were popping there for a while, man. When you got back together and started touring and put that new album out. Yeah, yeah, that and that took a while to put that out. I mean, we we initially got back together right at the end of two thousand three. And then it was sort of a slow start because we were just doing it locally around Maryland. And um, but once we started going out nationally and we had a, a you know got a real booking agent, it just steadily just kept increasing every year. And now I mean this year would have been killer, <laughs> but everything you know stopped and and all our all our shows got pushed, and and some of them. You know, when this thing first started, all the like the April and May shows got pushed to July, and then when when we got to June, all the all those shows that were pushed to July got pushed further. And some of them they just changed it to next year. You know, just put a twenty one after it, and um, so we still have shows on the calendar, but uh, who knows what's going to happen? There's still shows that. Right at the end of August, and then September is full because there's a bunch, you know, stuff from the springtime got pushed into September. But now I'm thinking, you know, that might not even happen. So, 
Yeah, it's starting. It's starting to look a little rough this year, man. For shows, it, it's kind of disappointing. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm Jones, and to go see some live music, man, and it just ain't happening right now. It's rough. Yeah, I'm Jones, and to go play some live music. <laughs> Yeah, I know they're having shows. You know they're they are having shows, but it 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 seems like it's it's really been cut way back. You know they're only allowing so many people in some of these venues, and it just yeah. And well, just, you know, Kix actually has a um, we're doing a show. Well, I don't know when this is going to air, so I, I was going to say next weekend, but uh, when this comes out, it might be after the fact. But we're doing a uh, it's a private party that um, it had been postponed at first and then we weren't sure if it was going to happen and then uh, they're going to limit the the amount of people. You know, they're just going to take all the precautions. So we're going to go do this. And since it's a private thing, it's not a public venue, I guess we can do it. But but it'll be like probably the only gig we do until I don't know when. Right. So how... I've been trying to go over all the songs this past week because I was like, oh, man, I haven't played since, like, mid-March. <laughs> how are, how are thing, how's the music scene down there in Nashville right now? Are they allowing bars to have live entertainment right now? They did. You know, they opened it back up for a second, but it was, you know, only the, uh, mostly, like, downtown, like, restaurants that had music they would let that happen and it would only be, you know, limited capacity. So there'd be, you know, one of the, you know, the vent, the kind of places that have a little stage in the corner and a band would set up. Th- those things were happening, but now I think they may have stopped that again. You know, that, that's been happening a lot where they, they open up and then they have to shut it back down. Right. Yeah. That happened here but, too. You know, I'm, I'm not too far from Kansas city and we get a lot of shows there and, uh, you know, and then we bought, we had recently bought some tickets for some shows, and uh, they, they've all gotten pushed back to next year already. So. Yeah, yeah. I even had I even bought a, some tickets here and there early on, and had to get get refunded. But yeah, before all this happened, I mean, I've only been only been here in Nashville uh, like a year and four months or something now. So I haven't been here that long, but, you know, before all this happened, I was able to go out and venture out and see some stuff. And it's really, well, it was really happening here, <laughs> but I, I love it here. I mean, the music scene here, it, you know, I was in, I was in um, L.A. for 26 years and it just seemed to be drying up out there. It's like, you know, and that's where Rhino Bucket is uh, based, is L.A., and we could not get it hardly Every once in a while we could get a gig out there, but very rarely, because like venues just don't want to pay anybody, and you know they have the whole pay to play thing going on out there. And then I came here to Nashville, and it's like, man, well here it's kind of weird too, because they have a the thing that they do here is a like you go to a, a little dive bar, and it'll be no cover charge to get in, and there'll be like this killer band playing like the musicians out over here are just so good and you just walk in and this band would be playing and they just have a little tip jar sitting up there on a bar stool in front of the stage and you just walk up and throw you know people just walk up and throw fives tens twenties in there and that's that's how the bands get paid and most of the band they'll get done that show and they'll pack up and go run out to the parking lot and they're off to another they have like a second show at some other venue down the road it's like it's pretty cool though <laughs> yeah I, I love it down there we visited down there a few times and i i just love the vibe down there man and and a lot of guys you know even a lot of the guys you know the 80s bands a lot of those guys are living down there now well yeah that's kind of how i um you know found out that or the reason I moved here was like so many people I know lived here and they kept, you know, uh, I, well, the reason I left California was, is I was in a relationship like for 25 years out there with this girl and, and it, it sort of came to an end and, uh, I mean, we're still friends and all, but it, it came to the point where, well, okay, I got to go find my own place now. And I started looking around out there and the prices of, 
even rent out there was just like unaffordable. Like there's just no way. And and I make decent money with kicks. And it was still like, man, like I can't believe this. So, you know, I had all these friends uh here in Nashville and everybody just kept saying, Hey, you should check out Nashville. Hey, you should check out Nashville. <laughs> so I, I went online and started looking at like home prices and all that stuff and it's just night and day. I was like, wow, I'd be stupid not to move there. Because, you know, that whole time I was with my girlfriend, I, you know, I thought I was helping her with a mortgage, with this nice house, and then it gets to the end of the relationship, and it turns out, oh, I guess I was just paying rent for, like, those all those years. <laughs> so, you know, I didn't want to just go com- continue paying rent somewhere, and then 10 years down the line, you know, be this old guy with nothing to show for it. So, so I decided to, to buy a house. And I, so I came here and I was so affordable in in the house I found, I would pay, I would have paid three to four times as much in LA for something even like half the size. Yeah. Yeah, It just amazes me how much the, the difference in price range for homes and cost of living is across the country. It's just unbelievable. Yeah, I know. In uh, yeah, even up in Maryland, where I'm from, because at first people are going, "Oh, you should just come back here to Maryland." And, and but then you know, I compare prices. Well, for one thing, Nashville just was more appealing, so you know that's why I chose this. But but even the the home prices in Maryland were more than than down here. I mean, not not a whole lot more, but but enough to make that decision like a lot easier <laughs> absolutely and so have you ever thought about getting your own project going down there oh it's crossed my mind because i haven't really um you know i've met i've met a bunch of people but but not really i've not really had a chance to hang out with people and really you know get to know the other musicians and you know i'll meet them temporarily like i'll be at a, some bar and I'll, I'll, you know, meet somebody, but yeah, eventually I'd like to do that. Especially if Rhino Bucket doesn't come around again, it would be cool to have some little side thing that I could do around here. And, and, you know, the musicians are just so good. It's like, how could I not want to do that? (laughs) Absolutely. Well, that's awesome, man. Well, Hey, why I got you on the horn, is there anything you'd like to promote? why I got you on here. You want to talk about any of the websites or any of the stuff you got coming up with this keto rocks or kick stuff, anything you'd like to throw out there? Well, yeah, the, well, the keto rocks podcast, um, I guess that's every Friday night. We record it. We pre record it on, on Wednesdays, but I think he posts it on Fridays, but he, uh, this guy, Jim Hobbs is the other guy, um, that I do it with. And, um, he's trying to figure out, he wants to do some kind of keto summit thing in the, at the end of September, but I don't know if that's going to happen now either. <laughs> you know, everything's up in the air, like anything public like that, where you have to deal with some, a venue. Um, so I don't know if that's going to happen. You know, if people are interested, they'll just have to watch the podcast to get more info. But, uh, and, and there's a, there's a Facebook page for it, um, which I should know. <laughs> I guess it's Keto Rocks. Is that the name of it? Keto Rocks, Carnivore Country. Okay. Yeah, I, I uh, I'm so like uh, un- unobservant sometimes. But other than that, the only thing I have to promote is really uh, maybe my my cooking videos on YouTube. And I don't, you know, it's funny. I I just started throwing them up there. So my YouTube is just Brian Forsyth. I I didn't even come up with a catchy name for it. <laughs> maybe maybe some at some point I'll I'll, I'll fix that. But uh, so far it's just my name. If somebody wants to check out any of my my cooking videos, and I always post them on my Facebook page too. Well, that's awesome. We'll make sure to put all your links up on there when we post this, brother. No problem. Yeah, and, and if when when Kicks gets back up and running, yeah, please come out and see us. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. I would love to. 
But uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, when you guys get back up and running and, uh, you, you know, you get that new album out and stuff, I'd love to have you back on for a little conversation, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've been doing, and that's funny, I've been doing a lot of these, like, interviews, podcasts, and since I've been home. And, uh, like, more than usual. Like, even when we were, like, uh, well, I'm, I'm, it's funny, because I, I seem to be the one that always ends up doing the interviews. Steve does some, but Steve does hates doing the interviews, so uh, I always end up being the one that does them for some reason. But I don't mind. I, I enjoy it. Well, I, I really appreciate you doing this, man. It means a lot. Yeah. Well, it's my pleasure. <laughs> But yeah, like I said, man, you know, when things get rolling again and hopefully things will get back to normal or at least some kind of normalcy, we can have you back on and uh, we can shoot the shit some more. Yeah. Well, yeah, don't hesitate to reach out, you know, you know, you know where to find me. <laughs> yes. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. I'm a big fan of yours and, and the band and uh, I really appreciate your time. Yeah, well, cool. Well, it's good talking to you. It's good talking to you, Brian. You have a great rest of your day. Keep posting them videos, man. I'm I'm putting the pounds on watching them. So, <laughs> it, it's well, a... you know, it's funny because I'm losing pounds eating it. <laughs> if you can believe that. <laughs> I believe it, man. I mean, there's there's a secret to all that stuff, man. So, you know, I, I mean, I, the the problem is you probably eat what you're supposed to eat. I'd have ate like six, seven slices of that prime rib, you know, at, at one time. That wouldn't have been good for me. <laughs> well, no, I eat a lot. I mean, that that uh, that tomahawk steak I made last night, that was over three pounds. I couldn't finish it, though. I was going to try. <laughs> yeah, that's And I got, I got about two-thirds of the way through, but there's still a big chunk left. Oh, that thing was massive. Yeah. Yeah, it was like two and a half inches thick. Jeez. Oh, I saw... I saw it at the meat counter, and I just couldn't. It was like oh, I gotta have it. I don't even know. I don't even want to know how much it costs. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you getting all this meat at, man? You could you could throw you could throw something out for those guys down there. Where are you getting all this stuff at? Well, that one, that particular one, actually came from Kroger. Okay. But, uh, but my the good like the grass fed meat and all that stuff. There's a place up in Clarksville. I think that's where it is. Called Tennessee Grass Fed. And it's just this, this farm where you can go online. You, you can order the stuff online, and then um, they local deliver. Like, there's a produce uh, market close to me, and that's one of their drop-off points. They do like the farmers market and and a few different drop-off points around around um, Nashville. So that's where I get most of my stuff is from there, since they're local. There and, and then the lady that uh, I get my duck eggs from. Okay, they have. They have meat sometimes too. <laughs> nice. Have you ever have you ever had a goose egg? No, I've only had chicken and du well, I have chicken, duck, and I've had quail eggs. But yeah, people talk about goose eggs and turkey eggs even. Man, I'll tell you the goose egg. I had a goose egg once, man, and this thing, they're obviously massive to begin with, but they're very, very rich, man. And I'll tell you what, they're really hearty to eat, man. But they're, really, they're delicious. If you can get your hands on one, they're delicious. Ah, yeah. Well, if I ever come across them, I'll definitely try it. Yeah, the duck eggs are like that too. Just, just extra. There's just something about them, mm -hmm. like similar, similar to chicken, but just better. <laughs> right on. Well, dude, I'm telling you, man, I really did appreciate having you on today. I appreciate your time. You know, I appreciate what you do for a living, man. It's, it's awesome. Well, thanks. But uh, I'll, I'll be reaching out to you in the near future, man. When you guys get back rolling again, I'd love to have you back on and uh, to talk to you again. Okay. All right, Brian. Well, you take care of yourself. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. That concludes today's episode of the Metal Bob Live podcast. Please go to our website to check out our sponsor links. And thank you for listening. Metal Bob out.